Hey guys and girls, this is Gordon Overkill with another episode of my current Adam run with Gerion, male, level 8, Dark Elven Monk. Well, uh, what better way is there to start your weekend than playing a couple of turns in the greatest game in the world? So that's what we're going to do right now. Like in the last episode, once again I'm going to start with some hints for beginners who are new to the game. So if you don't want to see that, I will write in the info text how long it will take and you can skip directly to the part where the real action goes on. Well, last time I told you a little bit about the stats, about the skills, about uh, the inventory. Today, as I was asked in a comment, I will do it even more basic and talk a little bit about the controls. First one really important thing, if you want to control your Adam character, use the numpad. So you cannot only walk to the right, to the left, up and, uh, and bottom. You can also walk diagonally and that's so important in order to outrun your enemies. So definitely do that. The number 5 has a rather important uh, function too. If you press 5, your character stands on one square and waits one turn. That can be really helpful if you want to wait for an enemy to engage, if you want to stand here a couple of turns and regenerate your hit points, power points or whatever. 5 lets you wait for one turn. And the bottom S lets you search the squares around you for one turn. Very important if you're searching for traps and you've got the trap detection skill or also if you're searching for secret doors. Uh, it is of course rather boring and also rather dangerous if you want to uh, walk to the side. If you just click the 5 button or 4 button, 6 button or 4 button a million times in order to walk. So there is a really really helpful command which is the walk command. Plus, uh, press W for walk and then the direction in which you want to walk. And the character will walk as long as he can until something in uh, interesting happens. Like here he uh, crossed the whole room and stepped into the corridor. There he stopped. He will also stop if he sees a hostile monster or if he steps onto an item that he could take up. Use that walk command. If you just keep hammering on the walking keys you will accidentally run into dangerous enemies they will kill you. It will definitely happen. I am talking from my own experience. It happened to me a million times until I found out about the walk command. Also, see, we are currently quite heavily hurt. We've got just 34 hit points. So we can press W, the walk command, and afterwards 5. So we keep staying on one square for a whole lot of turns. We regenerated 2 hit points until this hostile rat came into view. So uh, something interesting happened. The rat appeared, the giant rat, and uh, the character stopped waiting. So let's go into the fight. The first thing I do when I walk through these corridors, I press one of the F keys. F1 to F7 makes you change the tactic settings. F1, Berserk, plus 7 to hit, plus 3 damage, minus 13 defense value. Plus uh, F2, very aggressive. F3, aggressive. F4 is normal, everything plus 0. F5, defensive. F6, very defensive. F7, coward, minus 8 to hit. Minus 4 damage, plus 15 defense value. Like I told you last time, these tactic settings also affect uh, the efficiency how you increase your weapon skills. Take a look at these weapon skills. Here they are. Control W for the weapon skill, uh, skills. And uh, you see you need uh, a couple of marks in order to increase your skill to the next level. Our exoskill is trained quite well. Level 5, plus 3 to hit, plus 2 damage, plus 1 defense value. We need 44 more marks in order to increase it to level 6. So if I want to increase that, the best tactic would be Berserk. It increases our chance of hitting, we get the most marks from each attack. But using Berserk tactics has a negative effect. We will not train our shield skill while being in Berserk because we don't focus on defense at all. So if we want to increase our shield skill, we have to make sure that we block as much as possible with our shield. That means we need to lower our ordinary defense. And the best uh, setting therefore is very aggressive. Minus 7 defense, we've got just 17 points of defense left. So the chance is highest that we need our shield to block. 
We uh, do not defend ourselves with our weapon, but we need the shield and that gives us shield marks. So very aggressive is the best tactic settings to train your weapon skill and shield skill at the same time. What else can we talk about? Well, what do you want? Which displays do you need? I just showed you. Control W. Weapon skills. We have got Alt T. Your talents. We've got Alert, Miser, Quick and Treasure Hunter at the moment. We've got Control no, Alt B. Not B, Alt B. Shift B. Yes, Shift B. Character information. Here you see what uh, race you are, which gender, which class, what else is in interesting here. The age, you could, you can get aged unnaturally if you fight ghosts, for example. And uh, that could become really dangerous. And of course you see your star sign, which is very helpful too. We have got the right alt key plus Q, the add sign for our stats. Here we see how high are our stats right now and how high is the potential maximum. For example, strength, currently 16, we've already reached the potential maximum. That means we cannot increase it any further without magical means to increase our potential maximum. On the other hand, dexterity, 20, we could get it up to 40 with training. Okay, it's get quite hard to get it so, much, so far up, but we can increase it a lot more if we want to. Also we see here in our current tactic setting how much uh, damage we do with our weapon. We are uh, still in, in which are we? Coward mode. Coward mode. That means we've got very bad fighting skills. Just plus one to hit, hit and 1d6 plus one damage. That's not very much. If we go to Berserk, we've got plus 19 to hit, 1d6 plus 10 damage. A lot better. What else is interesting here? The weight. We are currently carrying around 2,315 stones. Below 2,200, uh, 1,238, everything's fine. Over 1,238, we get burdened, reducing our speed and fighting skills. Over 1,651, we get strained, reducing these skills even, uh, even, even more. And uh, from 2,476 to 2,887, we get very strained, reducing then even more. Um, if we are carrying more than 2887 stones, we will get overburdened, we cannot walk anymore and our stats go through the bottom. It can even happen if we for some reason, there are some reasons to do that, if we carry a lot too much, we will get crushed by the weight of our equipment. Speed is an interesting stat always, it's so important like I told you last time. Here we see the game time, it has some important meanings too, but I won't spoil you in this regard. And I think uh, that's more or less the most interesting thing we can see on that screen. What else do we have? A. A shows us the skills. Quite useful too, you can use a quick skill uh, system, but I usually don't do that. Um, Shift Z the spells you want to cast. I do not cast any spells with this character right now. We're not even able to cast a single spell. Shift Z is uh, spells and Z without shift, ordinary Z, goes to our magic wands if we had any. We don't have any right now. Shift E cleans your ears. Just important for one particular thing. E without shift the eating menu. Here you eat your rations or whatever you need to eat. Double point, uh, shift D, drink menu. We can drink our potions, but currently those potions are not identified. It's risky to drink them. They might even be poison or something else that harms us a lot. Uh, what else do we need? We've got drink. Ah, it can be very important. Shift 1, exclamation mark lets us dip an item. For example, we could take our battle axe and dip it into one of these potions. I'm not gonna do that right now, I don't want to waste the potions, but that can be useful. For example, use holy water in order to bless your items. Dip them into holy water. Use blessed oil of rust removal in order to make them waterproof. B dip your weapon into poison to do poison damage to your enemies. Dipping can be really, really helpful. Anything else we need? Oh man, let me let me guess. X 
The X button shows you how much experience you need for the next levels and how much experience they are still missing for the very next level. Very helpful as well. Okay, that's it. Let's just kill this rat. Afterwards I'm gonna show you something else. I go to a very aggressive mode, attack the rat, kill it. On the ground we have got a pile of gold. You can pick up this pile by pressing comma. We pick it up. If there is more on the ground than just one item, I'll, I'll drop a couple of things, so the rope, small shields and so on. Several items are laying here. If we just pr uh, press comma, we can pick them up one by one. If we press control P, we can then choose several items to drop at once. But the quickest way, if you uh, press shift comma, apostrophe, you can choose pick up everything. Now you pick shift, uh, press shift Y and uh, just keep the enter key pressed and you pick up everything at once. Very, very helpful. If you want to drop your stuff, you just drop D for the drop menu. You can drop a single item. You can uh, press Control D to get an uh, extended menu to drop several items. A, B, C, we drop them all. And by far the most practical way, you press double point, so shift point, and afterwards D to go to the extended drop menu. Here you can choose to drop all your helmets, all your shields, all your food, all your potions. Very helpful, all unpaid items in the shop or even all items of unknown status. You don't know if they're cursed, if they are uncursed or blessed. If you do that, drop all items uh, of unknown status on an altar. You can drop them all at once. Get their status ID to co-aligned altar and enough piety. Afterwards, you can pick them all up with the short pick up command apostrophe that I just told you about. So wait, everything is dropped. See here, everything's laying on the ground. I press apostrophe and uh, capital Y, shift Y, and I pick everything up again. Very handy command, definitely. Well, anything else you need to know? Uh, if you want particular information about an enemy or anything, what's over there? I press L for look. Afterwards, over here, I see there is a bandage laying on the ground. I see here there is a wall, solid rock, an open door. I get special information if I use the L command. I take the bandage with me just in case we start bleeding. Uh, what else do we need? Not quite sure. I is inventory, of course. Um, yeah, Control X gets you to a special menu where I see your class powers. So far, we have only one class power: the circular kick. But if we go here and press C. We apply the circular kick, attacking everybody around us. Currently we're not surrounded by any enemies, so we don't need to do that. There are a couple more very special features. Okay, one thing you definitely need to know. Here, this red, let's kill it, using missile combat. I press T for target. Aiming at the red, I press T another time. And we shoot at the red. So pressing T twice, that's how you shoot at an enemy. And there is one command that is very handy too. Press, uh, I don't know how's the name. The sign looks like this one bar, another parallel bar, and two bars in the other direction right through there. Shift and that key makes you repeat the very last action you took. My last action was walking downward. I press the repeat command, we walk downward again. Can be very handy as well. Well guys, that's it for the comments. If there is anything else I forgot, if there is anything you saw me doing and you don't know how I did it, feel free to ask in the comments, I will definitely answer it too. Apart from that, I think this is the most important stuff. At least in the dungeon. There's of course also something you can do on the Overland map, but I'll show that when we are back at the Overland map. So, here we go. Let's go into the exploration mode. Let's see what the Druid dungeon has to offer for us. A locked door, let's kick that. Ah, yeah, I forgot about that command. Oh, we got blinded by a trap. I show you how it works if we find the next door. Here it is. I press K for kicking. And then I kick the door. You shatter the door with a mighty kick. That's how you get into oh, a dark room. Into a dark room, but that's how you get into rooms that you uh, can't enter otherwise. The door is locked, you don't have the key. 
dark rooms are kind of dangerous. I don't want to stay in there too long. Oh, there is a ghoul right behind us. And ghouls are dangerous. I use defensive tactic. I don't want to get hit by the ghoul. They have a paralyzing attack, which can be very dangerous for early game characters such as Gerion. Okay, we have to go back in the dark room. That's a bit of a problem. Don't have a torch either. So I'll just try to find the next door. Here it is. All there. I'll shoot it once. There it comes. Shoot it twice. Our bow skill increases. And it goes to melee. Can we kill it? Come on. Yeah, there it goes. Did a little bit of damage, I think. So now we've got another scroll. Here's everything we can read. We still have that brass bound tome. Are we already good enough to read it? Literacy 79. Probably I'll give it one try. I close these doors pressing the C key. C for close. I open the doors, stepping in that direction and pressing yes. Close it again. Uh, which brings me to another useful command I forget. Uh, press Shift U in order to use items. There are items like keys. You can use keys in order to lock doors. You can use other stuff too, but that's also a very handy command. Let's try to read this book. It drains our health. Crap, we're definitely not good enough to understand the book. So here we go. That's not the whole level. I'll check the rest first. So we have to go back into the dark room. Although I don't like it. Ha, but here we go. An arrow and a bit of money. Ah, one thing I forgot. Press double point, so shift point for double point and wait. Double point and T in order to switch the dynamic display down here. Here we see the energy points of our last action. Our gold, our ammunition for the current missile weapon. The movements, the turns we played, and the speed. I think I'll stay with the turns that we played. That's quite interesting to keep track of how fast we are progressing. So, this is the level. I hope that helped you a little bit. Like I said, if you've got any more questions, feel free to ask me. I think probably the most important thing is uh, the diagonal keys as well as uh, the walk command, that's what helps me most. Also the extended drop commands, they are, um, are very, very handy. So we killed that giant rat. Should we eat it? Yeah. Don't forget to pick up the ammunition afterwards. Okay, there must be a secret door. No level is just that small. I'll search if probably we can find it. Yeah, here it is. After a while you get a feeling for the layouts of these levels, so I could, most of the time I can at least halfway guess where the downstairs are, uh, where the secret doors are, that's what I meant. An arrow barely misses us, that's an arrow trap. Let's pick it up. Have we got enough food? Yeah, we've got enough. Oh, I'll pick it up anyways. Well, maybe I should not have done that. I'll eat the fortune cookie. Fortune cookies give us small hints about the game. They say that patience is the better part of Valor. They're right, they're right. Adam, if you try to rush it, if you try to face an enemy that you're not yet strong enough to face, that's what kills your, uh, kills your characters. Rather be patient, level up a little bit, get yourself some better equipment, afterwards come back and kill that monster safely. I'll kick that door. And while I do that, I will take care of one thing. There are certain kinds of door traps that could potentially harm you. One of the most dangerous is the stone block traps. Lots of stones fall on your head if you try to open the door or kick it. But these stones only fall on the square right in front of the door. That's why I rather kick it from a diagonal angle whenever possible. So avoid the stone blocks just in case that uh, there is a stone block trap. one other crucial thing is to know about the strength of the monsters. Can you take them on? Can you not take them on? But there is no other way to learn that but experience. Can't exactly remember our equipment. Ah, that's it. 
This guy can paralyze us too, so I'm happy that we could kill it from a distance and we even reach level 9. Let's increase alertness twice. I want to get to 80. Let's increase athletics as well. Almost 80. Let's increase... Maybe literacy. Maybe... What else do we want? Maybe rather... First, I find weakness goes too slowly. First aid, also very helpful. First aid, yes. First aid, up to 70. And as every three levels, level three, level six, level nine, level 12, and so on, we get a specific special talent. We took a look at the talents a little bit earlier. I didn't exactly remember what we all took. Um, but I think it might be a good idea for a monk Monks lose their special fighting powers if they are too heavily burned. That's why I'll take the Porter talents. Porter and the follow-up talents. To increase our carrying capacity. Oh, our movements are getting uh, quicker. An increase to dexterity. Nice. Alert, Miser, Porter, Quick and Treasure Hunter. I like that. I forgot an arrow. I thought I saw something like that. There must be another secret door. I'm quite sure. Yeah, here it is. Very good. Pick up the arrows and the gold. Kill the jackal. Good. What's that? A horned helmet. And horned helmets means a guaranteed increase to our protection volume. Plus one, plus one. Let's check if it's... It is not even cursed. Excellent. That's our seventh point of protect, protection value. And as I always like to say, protection value absolutely equals survival in the early game. Doppelgangers are immune to each kind of uh, missile attacks. You can kill, kill them by spells or in melee, what I tried. But as you see, the doppelganger confuses us. That means we uh, have a high chance to run in a random direction afterwards. Is that a mithril, a metal ingot? I think that's mithril. I picked that up because it sells quite fine. Where were the downstairs? There they were. We have a spear, but also a scroll. We take the scroll. Karmic lizards. If you attack these guys in melee, it's a very bad idea because that means uh, that you get unlucky with each hit. So I tried to kill this guy only using our bow. Down he goes, excellent. So don't want to hit the melee if they drop a corpse. It's a good idea to, uh, to eat that though, because that increases your luck. Not decreases, but increases. And that looks really badly. Can we swim? No. Fuck. I'll check if there is maybe a secret door somewhere up here. Doesn't look as if. Have we got any chance to get over there? Have we got a pickaxe? We don't have a pickaxe to get over there. We would have to swim for one turn. Oh, fuck! Dangerous. I stepped into a trap, which is a snake trap. These snakes are highly poisonous. Being a dark elf, I don't know, maybe we've got a certain percentage of poison resistance, but I'll get to go to very aggressive tactics nonetheless. Try to get rid of these pit wipers. First one is hurt. And I hope they won't poison us. Come on, kill it. Yeah, first one is down. But still we are surrounded. Need to kill the next one. Wow, that was very good. It retreats. It is down. So I'll go down here, so we ha have to fight no more than two of them at once. Come on, kill it. Good. And they're all down. Nice. They didn't manage to hit us. We get a new amulet. I'll take the loot. I think that sells quite well. And I'll take the gold. That was not bad. Not at all. <sighs> I really wonder if we should go around there. I'll put... Not, not the shield, but I'll put the helmet, the weapon... The gauntlets, 
into our backpack. I hope that reduces the chance of them getting rusty. Now jump into the waters. Oh fuck. Okay, we can. He is neutral. We are drowning, of course, because we cannot swim. We took 18 points of damage, but since this guy is neutral, we can just swap positions with him. Not while swimming. Fuck. We need to swim one more turn. Fuck. Oh, that's what I was afraid of. Our scroll gets drenched. Another scroll gets drenched. The small shield rusts. And one more scroll gets drenched. And we lost half our hit points during these two turns. But, as you can see, it was worth it. Oh, fuck. I put the wrong helmet. It was definitely worth it because we see the downstairs. We can get further through the dungeon now. What else did we have? There was something else. Ah, yeah, I remember. I remember the gloves. Blue garments. So, let's kill this guy. Can I stand in our way any longer? I'll see if we find something more. That looks like a mithril shield. Small mithril shield. Nice, I'll check that out. They have 0 5 on average, I think. No, 3 1. It is the same as the wooden shield, but it is more durable than a wooden shield. Nice. So, let's see how far we get. Really happy we got over there. Eat this. I want the scroll, but I don't think that would be very clever. Rather leave it. We don't get any further in this direction. See what we can do up here. This guy can penetrate our armor. I'll do that very defensively too. Good, that worked. Rusty chainmail. Rusty makes it a lot less durable, but I'll equip it anyway because it won't harm the defense value, which is 5 points. It is not cursed. Excellent. Increasing our defense to 9. I like that. 9 defense is already quite decent for the early game. Dark Elven Warrior. I also do that in defensive mode. You can do a lot of damage otherwise. And there he goes. Come on. This guy's easy. This guy's easy too. Nine points of defense. I'm really happy about that. Makes me feel a lot safer. And we're done with everything of the level that we can do right now. Now we can also... Oh, fuck! This guy hurt us heavily. That hurt. G. Take care of some of the wounds. Very good. At least we regenerated a couple points. Pick out the arrows. He shot at us. Orc. That was an orc. Lizard man. So down. And here we go down the stairs. You feel some... S oh, we're not even in the unremarkable dungeon as I thought we were in the druid dungeon. Of course we are. Of course we are. There's a cat. Did we kill a cat so far? No cave tigers or cave lions. Any wild cats? Not either. I'd like to keep it like that. That's the bottom level. So, let's go back up. Cannot do that right now anyway. And we have to jump back into the water. Definitely have to. I hope. Yeah, that was again a lot of damage, but we survived it. Re-equip our stuff. Battle axe and the... Uh, Gunlets. And it's time to go back to the surface. That's the druid dungeon for now. We have now already, since we entered the level, we have spawned the druid. I think that's an advantage. It helps us to uh, fight a rather weak druid later. Axis reaches level 6. Nice. Well, that's quite cool. We're already level 9. Okay, we need to get through here. Poison spider. But we were able to kill it good. Uh, we're not satiated. I'll eat that ration. I'll eat another of our rations. Great meal. Excellent. Ogre, quite weak. Same with that guy. There is another blink dog. Let's just kill it. 
Where are the upstairs down there? Excellent. I almost forgot that we've got ourselves a blink dog corpse last episode. There's another ghoul. Dangerous. But it didn't reach us. Very good. We got ourselves a blink dog corpse. That's really, really helpful. Eat that fortune cookie as well. They say that good gamblers know which coins they have to use. That's a hint for the casino where we'll get later in the game. And well, uh, if he's tested like that, maybe I am a good gambler because I know what to use. So here we go. Eat that as well. And leave the dungeon. So, what do we do next? I think now we are definitely strong enough to go back to the outlaw settlement. Let's fight these pack of wolves on the way. Maybe they drop something nice. At least it's a bit of experience. We don't have to walk many turns. Get a broadsword. Worth. So, get up here. Enter the outlaw settlement. Let's see, let's see. Here's an ordinary guy, not very dangerous. I will take a look in here. The black market. The black market sometimes has really nice equipment. Let's take a look around here. Ordinary war hammer, leather armor, light boots, orc spear, nice. Scroll of defense, cool. The first one we really need, if we can get it. Potion of water, also very nice, I'll pick that up. Very nice rusty gun, let's I'll take these anyway. And that's amazing! Seven leak boots! One of the greatest items in the game and we can get them for 8,000 pieces of gold in the black market. Wow! We need money. What do we have here? Nothing interesting. Trap creation, nope. Anti-magical splint mail of power, nice! Oh, too heavy. I'll carry that over there later. And a spellbook of knock. So oh, heavy. I have to sell our stuff first. So I'll drop what we already have. Drop unpaid items. Why? And now let's sell our stuff. Everything we don't need. This is six. Yeah, the rest can go away. How much is this pair of gloves? Fifteen. Not bad, not bad. Check that out. Fencing gloves. Plus one, plus one. I think they are better than the blue gauntlets. And I think they cannot rust. Excellent. Better gloves. How much is this? Twenty-seven. Good. That means it is very likely not cursed. Let's equip it. Yes. That's um, the necklaces. This one is 13, the other one is 22. I'll sell the one for 13 and equip the one for 22 because that's surely not cursed. That's how you use the prizes in order to identify your stuff. Let's see if there is any particularly expensive weapon. 19 for the long spear, that's quarter stuff 6. 28 for the broadsword, that's also not too much. Rusty Warhammer 9. 63 for the saber, I'll keep that. 19 for the flail, 18 for the mace, 22 for the Warhammer. Two battle axes for 80, that's also normal. Good night, nine. But there was one weapon I want to check, which is this saber. And it is indeed a saber of penetration. Wow, what a nice weapon. Plus four to hit bonus. And penetration means that this saber ignores the enemy's armor value. Very, very useful. I might even consider making this one rust proof, proof later in the game. Very, very nice. Wow, I'll sell the battle axe. We don't need that anymore. The saber is better in any single respect. Let's check these weapons. The bow is 15, the other bow is 22. We'll sell the one for 15. I'll sell the sling as well. Sell that one. Check out this. It's the same. Anyway, I'll drop the others. Uh, maybe this one is, is uh, blessed. Ah, that's very likely. Um, I'll keep the rocks, keep the quarrels, keep the arrows. 
<sighs> I'll drop the lumps of clay, they're so heavy. And give some at least a bit of money. I'll sell the bandage because usually I don't use them. I'll sell the flattery sets because I never use them. I'll sell the iron ingot and the loot. Loot 22, 6, 18. That's a bit of money at least. What else do we have? A vibrating ring for 18. 18. Might be cursed. I don't think it's cursed. I'll try that out. Oh, it glows in black, right? Uh, black light. It is cursed. An auto causing ring that sells for so much is very likely a ring of the fish, which allows us to breathe underwater. I think uh, this is a ring of the fish. But uh, I'll show you what cursed items do right now. Um, if I try to unequip it, you cannot bring yourself to remove the vibrating ring. It is red. It is cursed. We cannot unequip it anymore. At least for a while. There are certain means to get uh, rid of it, but we don't have these yet. So the scroll of warning. I check the price of these scrolls as well. 13, 67, wow. One, that's not so good. I'll sell the scroll of warning. One is really low. Very likely it's cursed and crappy. How much is this book? 31, okay, not too much. So it's very likely not a super powerful spell. I'll sell the candy. And that's it for the moment. Let's kill this outlaw. Excellent. Here we go. We're burdened. I'd like to carry this one over there though. And also this book. That's the stuff I'd like to maybe steal later in the game or I'll probably even buy it. I put all the rest to the very bottom right so I can remember that's the crap that we don't need. Scroll of Uncursing, nice. That's one of the means to get rid of a cursed item. But I won't pay 6,000 gold pieces for it. So here we go. Um, there is one more nice thing you can do here, which is learn the pickpocket skill from Yagius, the Master Thief. There he is. Hello, Yagius. Oh, fuck. I should press yes. Do you want to train with him? Yes. I'll do that. He teaches us pickpockets. Level 1. Not sure if I will use it, maybe not, but at least we've got it now. So, anything else I want to do? Maybe I'll tell you a little bit about uh, which dungeons to take and which... No, uh, no, 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 no. I'll only do the tutorial stuff in the beginning of the episode. So I think, well, let's end it at this point. We talked a lot about the game, about hints, we didn't do much progress, but we increased our equipment. We have now got... Wait, why do we have got 8 points of protection? Didn't we have 9? Did I forget anything? I thought we had 9 at one point. Hmm. Don't ask me why. We've got 8 points of protection. 8 is not too bad. We have got a better armor, we have got a nice new pair of gloves. I think that's quite fine. So, let's end it at this point. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you've got any questions, anything you want me to explain, also you unexperienced players maybe, feel free to ask for it in the comments. I will do my best to answer them. And well, apart from that, see you all next episode. Until then, bye everybody.